Hey everyone. Well, um, let's uh, let's talk about the balancing, roller balancing. Let's talk about the vibration of the machine when you have it balanced. So I have a demo here. I have a test set up here, which is a small motor, a custom motor, which you can add in balance or you can balance it using the holes that we created on the disc. Um, but what I have here, uh, I'm gonna use this tool called Vibesense Balancer by MotionX which is basically is a wireless um, Bluetooth vibration sensor, which has the capability of um, um, being used as a roller balance circuit. It comes with a laser sensor that connects uh, to it directly. As you can see, when you turn it on, and by the way, when you wanna turn it on, you can use a small magnet switch that just bring it here and it turns on and off, right? So when you turn it on, um, it can just pair with uh, with our license of the software with the software that comes uh, with the with the iPad. Actually, the iPad is an extra piece that you can get, or you can use your own iPad. Um, so uh, the whole system can be used to capture the vibration of the machine as well as the RPM and the phase uh, from the laser and the software um, and with the sensor all calculate the uh, the imbalance that you have on your rotor. And we'll go through the details and see how it works and how we can use the system to balance it. But before that, um, this is, as I said, it's called Vibesense. It's a wireless rechargeable um, sensor. You can put it, uh, the sensor backward here. It's gonna charge as long as connected to outlet. And also you can use this magnetic base, which you uh, can attach it to your machine. Either, either a round shape rotor, uh, round shape uh, surface or flat surface that uh, can can be uh, that this sensor can be attached to to just measure the vibration. Well, all right. So let's start. Um, as I said, this is the vibration a sensor vibe sense. This is a laser sensor, and this is an iPad with our license of the roller balancer uh, software here. There are a few other pieces here that you might need. Um, these are some screws that I use as a balancing weight that I can add or remove from this rotor to just create a balance or just balance it. Uh, this is a small scale that you can uh, use to measure like how much weight you have. And of course, this is a tool that I'm gonna use to attach the, uh, the weight. All right, so let's, uh, let's uh, start the balance. The first step, what I'm gonna do, um, this rotor is a little bit of imbalance, but it's pre-balanced. So in order to have a little bit of imbalance, I'm going to use one of these screws. I already know that the weight of this screw is 1.7 grams, right? I'm going to just put it somewhere. Randomly, I'm going to just go uh, at one point, let's say at 120 degrees. By the way, this is a custom uh, motor that we have, and we created to just um, basically do some uh, balancing tests as well as the um, demoing how we can do the balancing of rotors. Um, on the rotor side, we customize that rotor that there are some holes with the, um, at certain angles that you can attach um, screws and the screws work as a imbalance weight. All right, so I just added that imbalance weight, which is around 1.7 gram. Let's say I don't know what is that uh, what's what's that imbalance and where is it located? Um, if you run this machine right away, of course it has a lot of imbalance and um, and you can hear the noise. Let me move the stuff that I don't need here. Um, all right. So what we're gonna do? Um, we're gonna take that laser sensor, connect it to our vibe sense, right? And it's already turned on. And as soon as you launch the software, if you go to sensor, since this is on, automatically it finds it and pairs very fast. Um, so let's say I just put my sensor here, right? Well, there is another tool that we have here, which is a, a right angle um, sensor, uh, sorry, right angle adapter that we usually use to um, add more flexibility to our uh, laser sensor. So here we go. So I'm gonna add this adapter between laser and also the sensor, right? So now you can adjust it to any point that you want. Let me adjust the camera here. So 
here we go. So um, there's a reflective tape. They already put it on this rotor. Probably if you rotate the rotor, you will see it. It's here, right? And as long as this laser goes toward um, hitting that that uh, that tape, it can read the reflection. So it's good. Well, before that, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna look at the vibration of this machine. Let's turn on the machine. I can see the vibration is not normal. I can see there is kind of weird sound coming from my machine. And regardless of that, if I just directly go and look at the vibration signal, um, what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna go to sensor and decide how much data I need. Um, sampling rate and all the stuff, you can go and um, set it in your setting, but uh, I'm not gonna get into details of that for now. And so you tap on update, it takes a few seconds and it captures the signal. Once you have the signal, can look at the signal in time or frequency domain. Um, if I look at the frequency, uh, sorry, the time domain, obviously obviously there is a there is an issue in the machine. Obviously there's an imbalance. As you can see, the imbalance is obvious here. It's a lot of imbalance. And if you look at the spectrum, of course, you see that um, there is a huge 1x peak at uh, 2000 637 RPM, which is my RPM, right? It's very, very clear that there is a huge peak here, right? Let me uh, move this cursor so um, you can you can see the, the peak, right? Well, of course, I know there's an imbalance because I just added imbalance. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just go and see if I can balance this machine. Get out of this um, page and go, go to the balancing uh, page. So there are several options of balancing. For this machine, it's a single plane balancing. Either you can use one channel, four rounds method that it doesn't need actually the, the laser sensor, um, or you can use the uh, two channel uh, single plane balancing technique, which is more accurate and also um, you need a laser sensor. So I'm going to use this technique right now. Well, let's, let's go back and look at the whole system. Here we go. Um, the first step is go here. Basically, the software guides you step by step and tells you what you should do at each step. The first thing is you need to know what your rotor speed is. Um, if you, well, the best way is use the sensor itself to just read the rotor, right? The rotor speed. So I'm going to turn it on and make sure the laser is hitting that um, that angle I want. And if you tap, if you tap this, um, let's just a, if you tap this one, it's going to read the sensor. Uh, it's going to read the RPM. So the RPM now is 2,710. Well, that's good. And then the next step is you have to enter the rotor weight roughly, let's say this is a one kilogram um, rotor, right? And the trial weight radius is at 30 millimeter. The correction weight uh, radius also is at 30 millimeter and also the trim weight is at 30 millimeter. Because the location that I can add weight and location uh, that I've access to, they're all like the same spot, so they will just enter all to the same. All right, so let's go to the next step. The next step is you have to get the original vibration. Again, you are going to um, make sure that the laser is hitting that, um, that angle. So one thing that you need to know is that the angle that is hitting um, the laser it should be aligned with the with the uh, location that you uh, place your vibration sensor, right? So it should be almost the same. Well, now it's a good location for the laser target, and I'm gonna just read the original vibration. This is the original vibration without doing anything yet. Well, it's gonna read the vibration. It's gonna tell me like 4.9 millimeter per second um, at that 
there's an angle, that's good. And I'm going to go to the next step. So you have to turn off the machine and you have to add a trial weight. So this is something that you can, um, by experience, know how much trial weight you can add, or you can, there's a tool here based on the rotor RPM and the weight of your rotor, it tells you what's roughly you should choose for your um, balance weight. For now, I'm gonna just choose, um, let's say, 1.7, I'm gonna just randomly put it at any uh, spot that I want. Um, let's say I'm gonna add it to, um, Let's, uh, let's go to at zero degree, for example, right? Let's add it to zero degree or 330. Let's put 330. So 1.7 at 330 degrees. All right, go to the next step and it's gonna ask you just Please do the vibration test with trial weight and just do the measurement. You're not gonna change the RPM. Turn on the machine. I already know that I can feel that the sound of the machine is different a little bit, either it has more imbalance or less. I don't know and I don't care. The software, the package, the whole system is gonna calculate the, the, the math for me. It's gonna do the job for me. So I'm gonna just read the vibration with trial weight. Here we go vibration is captured 2.9 which is less than the original vibration at that certain angle that's good go to the next step and it's going to calculate how much correction weight you should add or remove to the machine to see um, to, to make the machine balance it's going to tell me 2.26 gram at 29 degree well i'm going to go to my balancing weight and say well I have access to, let's say, what is the closest one? 2.2, I have 2, po actually I have 2.2. I have a screw which is 2.2. Well, I guess this is the one. Yes, so this is 2.2. I'm gonna take 2.2 and put it at like 20, 200, sorry, 293, right? So let's see the closest one that I have is, well, first of all, you make sure you remove your trial weight. You have to remove your trial weight. If you don't, that's not gonna work. The trial weight is just trial weight. It's not the weight that it's gonna see in the machine. Well, the other weight is basically the imbalance. I don't know where is um, where it's located, but if I add this one, it should almost remove the imbalance and bring the vibration down. Let's see. So 293. 293 so this is um, 270 285 200 so I'm gonna put it actually in at um, 300 well there is a there is a tool here that uh, in our software that you can use if you don't have access to that certain angle it's gonna help you to just uh, and tell you how you can distribute two different mass at two different location to do the same thing for the, to have the same effect of that um, correction weight that you need to do. Well, I add it and um, that's good. Let's go and see what happens. If I turn on the machine, obviously I can see the machine is running much smoother and nicer and of course the system is balanced. Uh, always there is a room to balance more. The question is where are you gonna stop well, depends on the standard they use, depends how far you wanna go on your machine. Of course, if you wanna do more balancing, you have, to, um, you have to work more on your balancing technique, right? So, vibration with correction weight. It's already changed a lot, and I can see it's like 0.14 millimeter per second. Well, that's good enough. I'm gonna go to the next step. If you wanna do a little bit more trim and more balancing, also it's gonna calculate the trim weight and it's gonna tell you put 0 0.03 gram at 245. I don't have that small weight, which means that this is a very, very small imbalance left in the machine and already you can see the machine is running very, very smooth, which is great. Well, I'm not gonna add any trim weight and I'm gonna go to the next step and uh, 
So you're going to measure the vibration between weight if you add it, I didn't. So I'm not going to add anything. I'm not going to do the vibration test again here. Um, at the end, it generates a report right away. And you can tap on the report. You can change many things. The name of the person, the operator, the company name, machine name, plant name. The title of the report. You can add a polar plot um, if you already added. So there's a polar plot at each step that you can just capture that one, save it. And then when you go to report, you can add that one as a polar plot that is attached to your, to your report. Also, you can have a picture. You can take a picture from the machine, right? That's the first picture. Probably I'm gonna have another picture, which has a close-up close of the rotor, how we did the balancing. Um, note you want you can sign your report and you're done well you can save your report make sure you save your report and uh, the report is there for um, you can export it to, to your devices you can email it or you can just uh, later come back and look at that report and see what happened and how, how um, the machine was balanced uh, how the machine was working before balancing and after balancing. Let's look at that number again. As you can see here, the vibration before balancing was 4.9. With trial weight was this, and after balancing is almost um, 0.148. Right? It's almost like 30 or 40 times lower. Great. Well, and this is your PDF report. You can export it, you can print it. Um, what I'm gonna do is just quick, I'm gonna look at the vibration uh, signal right now. Because if you remember, we look at the vibration signal initially and it was obviously we had a vibration um, problem, right? So if I capture vibration, so let's see few seconds once it's out well of course you see more signal because it's automatically zoom in and if you compare the original signal vibration versus this one is the overall vibration is much 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 lower and if you go look at the waveform you don't see that crazy uh, 1x vibration anymore um, the scale is, of course, a different compared to the initial one. I don't have the picture of the first one, but the overall vibration is much, much lower, as you can see, as you saw that in, in the report. Well, we did a good job, right? So the rotor is balanced, running smoothly, and good job. Well, thanks for watching.